Archaeologists digging up fossils from an ancient civilization. These fossils will be taken back to a laboratory where they'll be tested by various means, including carbon dating. What is carbon dating and how does it work? How does carbon dating work? Well, first of all, what is radiation? There are radioactive materials. Some of them are dangerous, some of them are not too dangerous. But the ones in this box are dangerous. And that's why the box has a special warning label, and inside it it has various lead lining and lids and so on. Let's have a look at uh, what happens to this material, which is called uranium oxide. If I take it out and place it near a special gadget called a Geiger counter, which is designed to pick up and detect radiation. You can see right now that the little orange lights are blipping around just slowly, which indicates there is some radiation here uh, as we talk. But if I bring the uranium oxide up near the tube of the Geiger counter, watch what happens to that little orange light. It's now spinning more and more rapidly. You can hear it clicking as well. And we know that there's a lot more radiation being given out and this machine can actually count that radiation. Well, that's a dangerous sort of radiation and one that we need to keep safely locked away in a lead-lined box. But other things are giving out radiation as well. All living things give out radiation because we have in our bodies, and plants have in their bodies, carbon-14, which is a radioactive form of carbon. And for every gram of carbon-14 that we have in our bodies, our bodies are giving out 918 rays per hour radiation, and that can be detected by very sensitive Geiger counters. But what happens after a living thing dies? Well, let's imagine that this is the amount of radioactive carbon, or carbon-14, in a living thing when it dies. It goes on giving out radiation as it sits rotting in the ground, and eventually we'll be down to half the original amount of radioactive carbon. When that happens, we say the half-life of that um, original amount of radiation has occurred and the time taken for this to occur is actually its half-life and it'll be in the case of carbon-14 about five and a half thousand years well by the time another five and a half thousand years have elapsed that amount of radiation will have diminished to half of that amount and that'll go down to another half in the next five and a half thousand years and in the next five and a half thousand years and so on so if we find out how much radiation is in a a dead organism, we can work out how long it's been dead. Let's go to an archaeological dig and we dig around for a while and find out a skull. We take it back to the lab and find out that it's giving out 459 rays per hour per gram of carbon-14. Another one, 229 rays. And another one, very weak radiation, only 3 rays per hour per gram of carbon-14. What does that mean? Well, if we found something that was giving out 918 rays per hour, it would be alive. If it's giving out 459 rays per hour, that's the half-life of carbon-14, it's been dead for five and a half thousand years. But if it's giving out just 229 rays per hour, that's about half of 459, then it's been dead twice as long, 11,000 years. If the weak radiation is only three rays per hour, we can work out mathematically that it's been dead for about 45,000 years. And so that's a method that archaeologists frequently use to find out how old things are, how old fossils are, and it's called carbon dating. I want to know.